Today's video is sponsored by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description below to find out how Energy Sage can help you contract local verified solar experts to help you generate clean, green, renewable electricity for your home, either through solar panels on your own home or by joining a community solar project in your region. In the words of the wonderful Nora Lee from the Itchy Boots channel, you should totally check her out if you haven't. Good morning, internet. It is 7.09 in the morning and I am in Moab. We are heading today to Colorado to drop off the Subaru that is behind me, that has been tailgating me the entire trip. We're also gonna drop off the trailer and then we're going to get to enjoy driving an F-150 without 5,000 pounds of car and trailer on the back. Last night, we stopped at our usual place in, in Moab and we charged up to 100%, which is the first time on this entire trip that we've been able to charge up to 100%. This makes me happy. I think it makes Michael happy. It gives both of us less range anxiety because today we have to climb up to over 10,000 feet. We are going on the Ike today. I know TFL truck have done it before, but we're doing the Ike after having driven this combination for three days straight for me and two days straight for Michael. Although Michael's not actually driven, he's been a passenger, lucky so-and-so. But Michael, just look out the front window at this really beautiful landscape. It is good to be back in Moab. It is so beautiful. And Michael has been geeking out at all the high-end mountain bikes and all of the cool off-road vehicles. I think Michael needs to come on holiday at some point to Moab. I was waiting in the car for you to call something up my eye. I thought I'm burning in the sky, then flicker out and fit into the night. If the first charging station of the morning and I'm afraid we had more Electrify America woes. But first, I'm gonna pass you over to myself to talk about today's video sponsor, Energy Sage. Energy Sage is an online service in the US that helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing photovoltaic solar panels on your home or can help you join a community solar program. We used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our house, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and they even put us in touch with an amazing local credit union to help us finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. Now is the perfect time to plan to get solar panels for your home. Many Energy Sage installers are now planning out their installations through to the end of this summer and some into autumn. Follow the link in the description to sign up for Energy Sage's free, no obligation service today. And if you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your solar project, or you use Energy Sage to find a community solar project, we will get a small referral fee. So you'll be helping the channel too. EA, I've used your network a lot and I have traveled a lot. I've done multiple long distance trips by electric car. I drove my 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV all the way from Portland to Austin, Texas and back. I've driven down to San Diego more times than I can remember. I've driven to LA more times than I can remember. And every time I've relied on your network to get me on my way. And it's been just fine. Last year, we drove across the US in a Chevrolet Bolt, and for the most part, Electrify America was, was pretty good. 
But in the last couple of months, every time I've gone to use an Electrify America, I've noticed there have been issues. Charging stations are offline or they're not working properly or there's been authentication issues or there's been communication problems. We stopped at a location this morning that we absolutely had to stop at. But every DC quick charging station was limited to 32 kilowatts, which to charge this truck to a decent amount would have taken us until 11.20 to get to 90%. It's currently 10.50 and we've been on the road for 45 minutes. So we kind of gave up and just said, screw it. We've got another charging station we can use further up the road. And I'm purposely driving slowly right now because I want to make it to the next Electrify America charging station that I know is functional, has 350 kilowatt charging. So we'll charge the truck at 170 kilowatts. I asked if it was working and they said, yes, there's no reported issues with that station. So we're gonna take a bit of a gamble and head there rather than stop at this come and go that is 30 miles down the road because it again is a limited power charging station. We stopped at Greenwood Springs and, well, the theme of today's video is going to be Electrify America sucks. These two are broken, so. No, good luck. <laughs> exactly. That's what, it's, that's what it's been lately. It's, it's crazy. Electrify America had two charging stations out. And despite telling me that both of the charging stations en route were providing full power to customers' cars, when we arrived, one of them was working properly, the other one was, was basically overheating. And this seems to be a constant issue with Electrify America charging stations. I don't know if it's the manufacturer, I don't know if it's the way that they're being designed and put in, or maybe it's because they're being designed without any kind of canopy. You could put a solar canopy over those charging stations, generate electricity to help power them, and also keep the charging stations and customers and their cars shaded, so it would be more pleasant in hot weather. And of course, in the winter, if you had a roof on them, it would prevent snow buildup around the charging stations, which of course is a major issue. So we charged up as best we could. We are now about 160 miles from Denver. Interestingly, my truck now tells me that we left with enough charge to make it not to the next charging station, but the one after that. We're only 53 miles away. And interestingly, based on the efficiency as I'm driving along, the truck keeps flipping between you're going to take three hours to charge up to you're going to charge up in 45 minutes. So a bit earlier on, the truck was telling me I needed to charge to 100% in order to meet all of my requirements for the day in order to get to our final destination. I can't fault the truck. I cannot fault this truck. We've had no overheating issues with the power delivery today. We've had no issues with the truck full stop, other than it losing cell phone connectivity, which meant that it couldn't replan en route. But aside from that, everything is just absolutely fine. The trailer's fine, but I will admit, I cannot wait to get rid of the trailer and to get my truck back and to have my truck do 300 miles per charge, because that's gonna make going home a whole lot easier. And I think Michael and I have got to the point in that trip this is the middle uh, of, the, of the trip where we want to just turn around and go back. And turning around and going back tomorrow is gonna be so easy, like maybe one stop en route because of that 300 miles per charge. Plus, we're basically going downhill.
we made it to the top of the Ike coming from the west. Now it's downhill all the way. We hit 11,178 feet as we went into the tunnel. And I'm very glad because this means that we've, we've done all of the nasty mountain passes now. We've done all of the, all of the horrible charging with a trailer and we will no longer need to stop and charge with a trailer on board. And I'm very, very happy about that because honestly today, we thought today would be the easy day. It has by far been the most mentally exhausting, the most stressful day of any of the days. And this was a day that was supposed to be fun because we're gonna be passing, you know, from Utah into Colorado, lots of pretty scenery. No giraffes, sadly, but lots of things to see. A fairly decent drive, but spoiled again and again and again and again and again by just a terrible charging experience. So we're downhill now for 44 miles, pretty much all the way. And I'm kind of glad we've just dropped past 11,000 feet. I don't do well at high altitudes. Luckily the car does, because it doesn't have an internal combustion engine. But, you know, EA, get your act together. Exciting though, uh, just as we were approaching the tunnel, we saw a fully camouflaged pickup truck towing something. So clearly a manufacturer test. I think I think it may have been a larger Ford. I think it may have been a larger Ford. Whether it was an electric, whether it was a gas or a hybrid, I don't know. But we definitely saw something heading up the mountain, towing something heavy. All right, thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Paraphrasing the words that I'm sure runs through Michael's head every morning because he's not a morning person. Oh God, is it another day? Yay. And it is another day. You may be wondering, why is Nikki ending video three with something from video four's morning? Well, we got to Denver last night. We dropped the car off. We dropped the trailer off. Then we went and basically collapsed in our hotel. We had had enough. It was really horrible weather, torrential rain. We found out yesterday evening that we just made it through the mountains before I-70 was closed due to heavy, heavy rain. There's been a lot of forest fires in Colorado and that's meant that all of the roots that would normally keep the soil nice and stable have all been destroyed by massive, massive fires. And that's meant that every time we have torrential rain, the ground is at, at risk of, of washing away, which of course in the mountains means a landslide. And so the Colorado Department of Transport has been really, really on the ball this year and been closing that particular stretch of road when torrential rain has been forecast and as you can see it's raining really heavily now our hope is that we'll be able to get over the mountain and back down towards Moab without having too many worries but because we didn't film yesterday's ending I'm gonna use Tuesday's ending to say goodbye to everybody which was the underground ending at Moab thanking you all so I'm gonna hand off to me from the past and we'll see you soon that is it for today's video. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you liked today's video, why not leave us a super thanks? It's super easy to do. And everything you do send will go towards helping us make great content. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go back to everybody who makes this channel possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who just watch and share, because that really does 
help get this video and others like it out to a wider audience. If you are a supporter at the Charged Up level, you'll see your name right here on my right hand side. Thank you very much. And if you have just joined in, your name is not there. We've been on the road, so we haven't added any new names for a, a week or so. So we're sorry about that. We'll do it when we get back. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters. They are Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muir-Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido de Hota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Dan Blair, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde. And of course, super out of this world thanks to our Starman level supporters. They are Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Redar, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Grayling, Matthew Jobnack. Kevin Burrowbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and last but not least, Ian. If you would like to join the amazing list of people that I've just read out, it is super easy to do. Just follow the link below to click join if you're watching on YouTube, or you can follow the link to join up on Patreon. Or if you just want to support the channel, don't forget you can buy t-shirts like this one from our TE Swag Store. You can send us a Kofi to help with our food costs during the trip. Although we've brought all the food with us so we didn't have to buy anything on the road. Or of course, you can also send us Bitcoin if you are feeling so inclined. Thanks for joining us. But until next time, keep evolving.